Welcome to part two of our rotary engine build presented by Valvoline. Well everyone, things have changed a little bit since last episode. And by the way, this is Joe Ferguson, our rotary engine builder. And not just ours, he does build rotary engines for other people. I would say over a hundred of them over the years. Yeah, it's been want, a lot. <laughs> if you want more information on Joe, go watch episode one where we give you his full resume. And as you would have seen last episode, we had some serious issues, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. The housings were completely ruined. Yep. The eccentric shaft was bent. Bent. Uh, rotor, the rotors were destroyed. Rotor, the, yep. the apex seal grooves yep. were ruined. Yeah. So we did some hunting around. Originally, we were going to use some FC housings that you had. Yeah. I, I was going to go buy another eccentric I, shaft. I was going to sell you guys some parts, and now I haven't sold you anything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Joe was going to make some money, and now he's not going to make no, any money. No. Because through our friend Dave Simmett, who had this uh, engine build planned, yeah. He yeah, bought we, his whole collection of goodies, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, we had kind of worked together on, on putting this package together for him and his plans changed and so he wanted to get rid of this and here we are. So what do we have here, Joe? Uh, so it's an REW based engine, uh, same as what you guys had. Um, uh, resurfaced rotor housings, uh, lapped and nitrided uh, irons, ported as well, um, balanced rotating assembly, um, RX-8 high compression rotors. Yeah, and that's kind of the special sauce in this build, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's a little unusual to use RX-8 rotors Something in a yeah. RW build yeah. because they're higher compression, which doesn't yeah. typically make sense with a turbo motor, no. but we think with a modern small turbo like we're using, it's actually be a pretty cool, like very responsive yeah. setup, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I wouldn't be pushing huge horsepower with this setup, but uh, that's not really what the goal is. So here we've got our ported iron, and this is a standard iron, the one that came the out of our motor. The one that came out of the motor, yeah. And as you can see, the shape of this port here is so much smaller than this one here. So this is the one that's been enlarged mm -hmm. with a template. So yes. There's a bunch of aftermarket templates that you can yep. buy for these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go online, there's, I don't even know nowadays, there's so many people making different templates. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the, the template I used for porting these irons was, uh, it's an old school one. It's a uh, Judge Ito. Uh, I, think, I think he's from New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> uh, I bought this from years and years ago and I've ported a ton of motors with this uh, template. And basically this is set up for REW but you can still use it on a, a, an FCRX7 or a 12A, um, but you kind of got to know what you're doing. Right, yeah. and so you hold it up against the front of the iron here, yep. and you would mark the, the new shape, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah. so uh, you line it up with your dowel pins, put your dowel pins in there, and then that kind of shows uh, right there is your comparison. Yeah, you can really see how that changes. Yeah. And obviously with porting, you're, you're enlarging that opening, so you're getting more airflow, but with rotaries, you're also changing the timing. It's yes. It's like you were saying. It's kind of like camming it's the motor. A, it's like putting a camshaft a in, cam a, in a, in a piston, regular piston engine. Yeah. So, so what you're doing with uh, with the, the the port timing when you when you take this edge here and move it out outwards towards the water jackets more, that is uh, uh, opening the port timing earlier. Right. So uh, um, as the rotor comes around uh, at a certain degree when it opens, starts to open up that port, now the air and fuel start coming in into the combustion chamber. Earlier than it would normally. Earlier than normal, right. yeah. And then, uh, and then moving the top portion here up higher and rolling it uh, over the edge, that's actually closing it later. Since our irons are already ported, Joe was kind enough to bring this spare iron here so he can show us what the porting process looks like on these motors that can only be described as original. Dave just said the word original, which means it's time for another Valvoline original motor oil moment. That's right, Peter. Valvoline is the original motor oil, and another original, Henry Ford, was an early customer, setting a land speed record in 1904 of 91.37 miles per hour with Valvoline in the engine. But did you know that Ford's groundbreaking Model T included a label on the dashboard stating only Valvoline should be used in its engine? I did know that, Peter, because I'm extremely smart. And I also know that this made Valvoline the very first trademark motor oil brand in the world. Now let's get back to the rotary building action. All right, Joe, where do you start with this process? Okay, Tem porting template down on the iron. Yeah. Uh, this iron actually already has been uh, enlarged uh, on the intake port. Okay. So I'm just gonna show you uh, the closing portion. Okay. So what I do is I just Sharpie this. The old Sharpie, you don't use the Dicom blue no. paint or whatever that stuff no. is? No. Too fancy. Too fancy for you? <laughs> All right. So take the template off. That gives you a good outline. Yeah. A guideline anyway. Sure. And uh, we'll just start going into it with the, with the Dremel.
and then you can just uh, start rolling it uh, down. Because again, in behind here is a, uh, a coolant jacket, so you can't just go straight down or, or port straight into the, the main port. You've got to kind of roll it. So. Joe, I noticed you switched from the more aggressive burr to the sandpaper roll at the end here. Yeah, yeah this is just a final go over finishing touch. You know, it takes a lot less material off than obviously the uh, the, the burr tool, so mm -hmm. um, you can get a little more precise with that, especially on the on the edges where you where you want a straight line. You know, with the burr tool, <laughs> you get those like little dips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it digs in pretty good. Yeah, so. yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> you do have amazing control, and uh, this is probably your first time using a cordless yeah. uh, die grinder too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. How, how do you I like, like it, it compared to the air tool? I like it. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to no get holes one. holes over your shoulder. <laughs> your hand doesn't get cold from yeah, the air. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, well it looks great. And yeah. um, is there anything you need to do in deep inside the pocket or over in the, the intake ports on this side? I, I'll probably go over it, yeah. Um, again, I, this uh, iron had already been ported uh, on, on, that side, on this right. side. Um, yeah, I'll have to probably just clean up the, the intake runner a bit. I'm going to do more blending in here, okay. um, especially along this edge. There's a little bit more touch-up work to do. Right. Um, but that gives people a, a broad overview, yeah. overview of the process. And especially and that, that, that rolling That rolling, edge. Yeah, yeah. You did a really nice job there. Super smooth. So yeah. uh, speaking of super smooth, let's transition over to uh, fitting up those side seals on the rotors. Mm -hmm. We are moving on to clearancing the side seals on the rotors here. And uh, we were saying earlier that it's kind of like setting the end gap on your piston rings, isn't it? Very, yeah, very similar, yeah, because uh, uh, that can make or break the compression. Uh, having those, you know, either clear, too much clearance will, will create blow-by, um, very similar to a piston ring, yeah. and, uh, and too tight will cause binding and, uh, under uh, heat, and then it can, of course, with binding, then you get lots of compression. So uh, first things first, we're gonna put one of these uh, corner seal springs inside the, the rotor, and a corner seal. Get that, make sure it springs, good. So with those corner seals in place, I guess it's time to throw the uh, spring in and then look at the, the length of this seal, right? The length right? of the seal, yeah. Okay. So the, the side seal spring is pretty important on how to install it because uh, it's just a little wavy spring. Mm -hmm. um, you install it, usually they have a paint mark on them from, from Mazda, so the paint always goes up, but if they don't have a paint mark, the ends are always up. Okay. So it just helps the end of the spring, just gives it that little push up. Okay. So easy to get that wrong, isn't it? It can be. And are these uh, length sensitive or just the seal? Uh, these are not, the seal is. Okay. It's an OEM Mazda side seal. Uh, you can purchase these extra long cut to fit, which is what we've done here. Uh, that way we can pre-clearance the seals the way we want. Um, another thing to note on these RX-8 rotors, I don't know if you can see the end of that, but it's actually a wedge shape. So the wear surface is the thickest portion at the top, and the bottom is uh, is the thinner spot, and it goes and it contacts the spring. This end is touching here, mm -hmm. like full on touching, and this end is nowhere near going yeah. in, which is good because we're going to clearance that. So I guess this is just that iterative process, isn't it? You take a little off, you check yes. it a little more off, yep. you check it, and with the the curve on those corner seals too, what do you do with with that? So that's why I've got this thing. It's just an, it's I got this out like a garage sale. It's like a uh, a knife sharpener or something like that. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to have water in it, but uh, I just use it the way it is. Yeah. Um, the stone's getting pretty uh, worn out, but it works really well for taking off very small amounts at a time. <laughs> fit back in, we're still got lots more to go. Yeah. <laughs> so we've clearanced this a bunch of times. We've got it to fit in the groove, but as you can see, there, it, you can Sticking on push the corner it down. Still, and, still, yeah. yeah, so it's it needs a bit more clearance. Okay, we've got this side seal very close to where we want it. Um, as you can tell, when it's sitting up at the spring height, pushed all the way up, there's a lot of play to that side seal back and forth, sliding all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, that's not 
where it's going to be installed, right. it'll push down under tension. So once it's pushed down, now that gap, that, that play is like yeah. almost gone. But There's you want still a little bit. Yeah, okay. you want play. So typically you, you'd be setting this, uh, this gap between the corner seal and the end of that mm -hmm. around like two thou. Um, How do you course, get a feeler gauge in of course there? It's That's very, a tiny little gap. Very hard to get a feeler gauge in there. Um, I just do it by feel. Okay. Yeah. But if you're really concerned about it, you could come in with a easily. With to, a, with yep. A feeler gauge. gauge. In there. And I do check once in a while with a feeler gauge just to be sure everything's working. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've done so many of these that you can just side, slide, slide them side to side, and and you kind of know where hmm. where the right spot is. Yeah. A little bit of an art form there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So there you have it. That's how you clearance your side seals mm -hmm. and. It's a bit of a, a patience testing process, isn't oh, it? Yeah. You gotta go yep. back and forth, back and forth. Yep. You've done one of three on this side, there's three more on that side, there's, there's six more on the other rotor. The rotor. So this is a pretty heavy investment of time to yes. get this just right. Yep. Yep. And there's really a, a, a delicate skill to it too. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the place where a beginner would go wrong, isn't it? Oh, 100%, yep. Okay, well there's your, your side seal lesson, everybody. We are moving on now to clearancing the apex seals. And for that, we've gone with iRotary apex seals, which is an aftermarket one. iRotary is uh, engineered, designed by mm -hmm. Ionetti or Dr. Ionetti? Dr. Ionetti, yes. Um, yeah, he, he was the one that came up with the uh, ceramic seals from way back in the day. I don't know much about the history on the company, but I, I know that his ceramic seals are, are uh, very well uh, uh, sought after in the racing, um, especially endurance racing. Mm -hmm. um, They're also very expensive though. Very expensive. And these are relatively affordable. They're yeah. not cheap. These are about 500 bucks, I think. Mm -hmm. But they should have... Uh, very good properties as far yeah. as a, a steel apex seal goes. Yes. Yep. Given so. that they were engineered by Ionetti, who's yep. a, a guru in the rotary world. Yep. So what is the clearancing process like? Um, so what we do is uh, take the apex seal and uh, this rotor's like fully been cleaned up, so it should just slide right in, no issue, just like that. Mm -hmm. um, now what I do is I take uh, shim stock, so this is actually 2,000 shim stock, and uh, that's what we're gonna clearance these for. Okay. And I end up just putting it right down, well, on either side, I'll do it on this side. But it, it's tight, there's yeah. already resistance yeah, right there, yeah. and, it's, and it's on the, it's the, the, the corner seal to apex seal clearance there. Okay. So we got just a small, thin file. Smaller than two millimeters, obviously. And uh, I'm just gonna take a little bit of material off either side of the, uh, the inside of this corner seal. Nothing too fancy, just a couple passes. Just put the shim stock back in here now that I've clearanced that corner seal. And that fits pretty good. Yeah, just do a few passes, there we go. Okay, Joe, now that you've got that clearance the way you like, yep. what's the next step? Uh, what I do is I'll actually, so we've got this apex seal with a missing corner here, yep. and obviously the feeler gauge fit in that side because yes. there's no corner seal there. Right. So what I do is I'll just flip the apex seal around to simulate the uh, the missing corner piece. Okay. Um, and then that way we can just double check this side and make any adjustments needed there too. So yeah, already it's, uh, it bound up a little bit. Yeah, it's a little sticky, so we'll take a little bit off that corner seal. All right, Joe, so you're happy with the clearancing of that now? Yeah, it's pretty good. And here is the other part of the apex seal. That's the corner of the apex seal. And why do they do it as a two-piece design like this? Uh, I'll show you here. They, uh, so the, the apex seal, the main portion, and the corner seal, when they meet like that, um, the main spring, there's two springs on this, you can see by the different, the, the steps. Yeah. So there's the outer spring, which actually pushes up on this corner seal and just exaggerated here, it'll basically push up, but as it pushes up, it also pushes out. So it's actually pushing this out against the irons. While Joe double checks these clearances, I should mention that with these RX-8 rotors, you do have to wire cut, EDM wire cut, the apex groove to be deeper because these F FD style Yes. Seals are actually taller than taller. the RX-8 yeah. ones. The RX-8 ones are almost, I don't know, half the height. I, I don't know the measurement off the top of my head, but uh, uh, they're very short. So yeah, to be able to fit these in, uh, EDM wire cutting is the most accurate and precise way of doing it. Um, and it gives you a really nice clean finish. So this, this apex seal fits in there really nice. So we get the benefit of the stronger, <laughs> deeper FD seal yeah. Yeah. with the lightness of an RX-8 rotor and the higher compression mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. And it's already been preloaded with a Mazda Motorsport bearing as well, which has yep. got a bigger groove in it for more oil. And too. a slight bit more clearance. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. 
So now that we're done clearancing the seals on the rotor, mm -hmm. it is worth mentioning that uh, iRotary specifies to always use premix of two-stroke oil in the fuel. Yeah. And maybe we can explain briefly what that's all about. Yeah. So uh, premixing the fuel with uh, some two-stroke oil mm -hmm. um, puts your lubrication into your fuel system, into your combustion chamber, and lubricates the apex seals. Uh, typically, these motors have an oil metering pump on them, which does draw the oil from the oil pan yes. and puts it in the injectors on the rotor housing in the rotor housings themselves, right. and that's how it lubricates the seals. But if we're you guys are deleting we are, yeah. uh, the oil metering pump, uh, getting rid of that, you can run. Um, a different like a synthetic oil in the oil pan right but you do need to have some sort of lubrication to your apex seal so right. pre-mixing is is every rotary guys uh, go to yeah and <laughs> it, do, it does make a lot of sense because uh, this type of two-stroke premix uh, oil is designed to be to, burned to burn. yeah where motor oil for your engine isn't no so this is going to leave less carbon deposits in yes. in you know on, on everything yeah so it's a much cleaner way of going yep and because it's separating the oiling system mm -hmm. for the rest of the engine from the apex seals, mm -hmm. it means we can run whatever we want in the sump, yep. really. So yep. uh, I think that's a, it's, it's the way rotary guys tend to go when they yep. get serious about performance. And obviously, iRotary agrees since yep. they, this is what they're specifying. So as you can see, Valvoline does make this uh, version as well as a racing version. So uh, we'll probably go to the full synthetic racing, racing version. All right, everyone, I think that's a wrap on this episode. And I know there was a lot of talking and not necessarily a lot of wrenching in this episode, yeah. but that's because we cheated by buying a motor that already had a lot of work done on it yeah, already. Yeah. So we were able to skip some steps here, but we hope that having at least illustrated how those processes are done, that you've learned something. And uh, I'm sure you'll have some comments for us in the comment section, especially with Joe tuning those side seals oh, by, yeah. by feel. By feel, no yeah. Feeler gauge, no I'll, feeler gauges here, I'll get, everybody. I'll get chirped by, for that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, thanks again, Joe, for, for donating your time to our, our cause here. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, ever, everyone, for watching. And thank you, Valvoline, for supporting this build because without your support, we wouldn't be doing this, this cool stuff with rotaries. By the way, everyone, make sure you jump onto team.valvoline.com where they have all kinds of cool technical content. They even have a 1-800 number that you can call if you want person-to-person uh, -person information about what oil to select for your engine. Let's say you're building a custom engine, you have custom clearances in your bearings, and you're not sure what weight or what type of oil to run. They will literally put a chemist on the phone with you and help you make that decision.